I think what you have to do is you have to look at the timelines. For me, it's absolutely inevitable that entertainment will be 3D. It'll all be 3D eventually because that's how we see the world. So that's, that's, you know, that's, that's my, my sort of uh, answer based on faith, but it's actually quite logical. That's how we see the world, and we, we obviously, when it's correct and convenient for us, we pre-select for that as the premium experience. If you look at the last four cinematography Oscars, Three of them went to digital 3D movies. Avatar, and then we missed a year, and then Hugo, and then Life of Pi. They were all shot with the systems that Vince Pace and I developed. And, uh, and so the, the, the highest version of cinematography was deemed three out of four times in the last four years to be a 3D digital movie. So I think we associate it with quality in the cinema. Uh, however, that's getting eroded by certain things, like low light levels from the projectors, too much bad conversion. Those were all, all by the way, native 3D, photographic 3D you know, films. Uh, but then there's, there's bad conversion. And people get confused because there's bad conversion and there's good conversion because we did it right on Titanic, but it cost $18 million, and the studios don't usually spend that kind of money. So I think uh, it's getting a bit polluted, and I think that people have had some bad experiences and so on. That might help explain why cinema goers these days are frequently opting for a 2D version of a movie. And in the home, too, it's also been greeted with a huge yawn of indifference. Those who have been seduced into buying 3D tellies barely use the feature, presumably because there's such a shallow pool of 3D content to enjoy. And if anything, it looks to be evaporating, with both the BBC and sports broadcaster ESPN announcing recently they're suspending 3D broadcasting. Despite all of this, the Avatar director remains bullish. When we can overcome the not insignificant issue of getting rid of those awful specs and find salvation in a glasses-free, so-called auto-stereoscopic experience. The viewing paradigm is very different for, for TV than it is for movies. I mean, just the, just, you know, you, you want to be, it's more you. social, you want to be able to parallel process, you don't want to have to sort of make a contract with yourself to watch uh, continuously for two hours. That's just not how we how we take in our, our TV what, what, on whatever kind of device we're, we're looking at, whether it's a you know big flat panel or whether it's you know an iPhone. Um, so what we need is auto stereoscopic screens, and that's coming. You know, we're uh, my 3D company CPG is supporting the new Dolby uh, Philips technology, which is gorgeous. It's absolutely gorgeous. Uh, it you know the price point has to come down. But as that rolls out, then the amount of content will come back up. We'll start seeing a lot more, more television production. But, it ha but it's not happening right now. We're still, you know, I mean, I've been saying for three years we're two to three years away. So I, I, th I suppose I should contract that down a little bit now. But, but in, the, in the chicken and egg scenario that we were in, you know, when, when, it, when it started to roll out through, through uh, movie theaters, you know, we've got to get, we've got to get more screens out there, we've got to get more auto stereoscopic screens out there, and then that'll drive content. But the content drives people buying the screens. Uh, one, and then, so that, then that, that feedback loop will get closed and we'll, it'll all speed up. So you, you envisage a day when the news would be in 3D? Oh, absolutely, sure, yeah.